Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a soulful music right there. It's your boy Crypto Blood. Welcome to another kicking in session. Today I've got Crypto Kenzie. Hey, we know, we know. <laughs> he wouldn't even let me get the intro we down. Know, we know. <laughs> That's what it's, oh, sorry. Go ahead, get the, I'm sorry, bro. I'm sorry. I'm oh, messing man. up. <laughs> crypto Kenzie, what's going on, brother? Man, what's good? What's good? What's going on with you, Crypto Blood? We can do it. Early Sunday, uh, Saturday morning. Mm. You, you picked one of the earliest slots. I'm like, all right. Gotta, mm. gotta, gotta really? Going. I forgot. You up north. You up north. Oh, wow. I'm Eastern Standard. Are you still Eastern Standard time? Oh, okay, that's good. Nah, man. This this where work get done. Yes, sir. This, this yes, work sir. get done, man. So, oh. uh, tell, tell the audience about... Uh, oh, actually, let me tell the audience how I found you. I actually found you through um, Trek. Trek oh, oh. Cryptos. You guys did a video uh, interview together. It may have been like six or seven months ago. I think it was an older video. Like about three months, maybe. It's been three months? Okay. Mm -hmm. So I randomly came across your video, your interview with him. I'm like, man, this guy's got some uh, good energy. You know what oh. I'm saying? Some genuine <sighs> energy. And I'm like, I want to definitely get him on. I, I, I heard a little bit about your story, how... You kind of got into crypto at the mm -hmm. absolute worst time. <laughs> Can I tell my story? Can I tell my story? Tell it. Look, I got in at the top. The top, top. Like, not, no, no, I don't try to hide it. I don't try to pretend. I, I don't try That's to good. pretend like who, no. I got, like, I looked at my Coinbase looking back like a year later. I'm like, what time did I actually get in? And I looked at the exact day. December 15 was the day I bought my first Bitcoin. I'm like, oh my God. Oh, God. that is the day when the seat. <laughs> oh, Lord. And I'm like, wow. Wow. I'm clowning. I'm clowning. We'll, we'll talk about that as well. I want to talk about a little bit about that and your journey and how you led up to this. I mean, you got a degree in accounting, I believe. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, you know, kind of just uh, want to have you tell the audience about your story and how you got to where you started your channel crypto and culture I mm -hmm. on, on twitter as well so um before that though i had every guest pick a song why did you pick this song by yay kanye West? all right all right Devil so in a new dress one tell us about why why that song all right so one straight up kanye is my favorite rapper been since he was since the early days because the reason why, and I'm, I'm not talking about new Kanye, I'm talking about old Kanye. He was rapping different. He was rapping different than everybody. Everybody else was rapping about something that I didn't understand. Cause I'm not gonna pretend like, you know, I'm from the hood and we were shooting this shit. No, me, I'm born and raised in Florida. My family's from Haiti, came to Haiti, poor as hell. It is what it is. Um, lost my father when I was young, he died from sickness. And real talk, um, when I was listening to uh, like uh, like rappers and when they were rapping about these like the life and toting guns and this and that, I was originally really, I really wasn't feeling it because it wasn't really me. You know, I was right. a dude. I was in the anime. I was into like corny stuff. I was right. I was a corny ass kid. And then Kanye, he was just rapping about something different. Yeah. And it was fun. I'm like, wait, I can vibe with this. Yeah. And so um, I believe um, um, what is it? My beautiful twisted dark fantasy is Kanye's best project ever. Like it's the, it's the best project. It's um, like, there are a few artists out there like Michael Jackson, um, maybe Celine Dion, I don't know, but they have perfect albums. They actually have a perfect album. And I feel like Devil in the New, um, Devil in the New Dress is the best was, song on that album. Was DMX album, It's Dark Outside, Hell is Hot. Mm. That was a perfect mm. album to me. Perfect too. album, perfect yeah, album, perfect bro. Album. I got a, my homeboy. My, my, I call him Twin. He be in my videos. I got two dreadheaded dudes with me in my videos, and my I call him Twin because our birthdays are in June and we Gemini's. And trust me, he'll go in with that. Deal. He's like, nah, bro, that one was a perfect album. It was it, and he'll explain that bit so in, intellectually that I, I I can't even explain it, but. Back to the the subject because I don't want to run off too quickly because that's just what I do, but yeah, Devil in the Jew Jeff just intensifies what that album was, and it's like the the perfect song, the intro. Like now, this is me. Dude. I'm a, I am the Devil in the New Dress. What you mean? I don't think you understand what I'm coming through with this crypto stuff. I'm gonna do it a little different because everybody has their own style in this crypto thing. But I I think my energy, just like how you said, everyone says the same thing when they first talk to me, when they first meet me. 
I watched your video and you have a different energy. Absolutely. You have a different, and I'm like, oh, y'all just not ready for what I'm coming through. Y'all so not Tell ready. us about crypto and culture. That's your YouTube channel. Yeah, so, um, um, go ahead. What, what led you up to first? I want to know what led you into cryptocurrencies. I, I think I heard you say you got uh, you got your pockets ran by a Ponzi scheme. Tell us yeah. about this Ponzi scheme. Okay, first, so. And then, and then lead us into crypto. All right, so. First things first, the Ponzi scheme wasn't hadn't do nothing with crypto at all. So okay. it wasn't crypto Ponzi scheme. I ain't get caught up in BitConnect. Yeah, I thought I thought it was Ron James. <laughs> no! uh, Craig, right, Craig, Craig, Craig oh. got you. The reason why I didn't get caught up in it, because I was already in one. So I was like, oh Lord, I, 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 this wait a second, y'all not saying nothing. Y'all talking in a certain way. I'm like, I get it. Y'all not saying nothing. All right, nah, I'm good. But no, so this is early. So Back in 2017, late 2017, as you know, that people my age, so I'm a millennial, um, later millennial, I'm 28 going on 29 this year, but I'm exposing my whole docs on this video. I, Bro, I think you're like 31, maybe. Okay, yeah. I'm around there. I'm yeah, around there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm like, trust me, I don't, <laughs> a lot of these dudes, like, they're not that old. I'm like, yeah. what is, what's it, um, not, um, Bitcoin Cash, what's his name? I keep, I, I lose his name now. Roger Ver. Dude's only like 40. Yeah. I'm like, oh, hold up. This is different. And he got into crypto when he was around our age. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I got a chance still. I'm good. But um, where was I going with that? Going back. No, just telling us about your story. Yeah. As far yeah. So, so how I got started. So, scheme and, and then you found Bitcoin. So what it was, was this. It's, it was network marketing. It was network marketing to help people fix their credit. Because... Okay. As you know, everybody's buying a house in our age range, millennial age range. Everybody's buying a house right now. And personally, me, after being in crypto for so long, I'm like, oh no, this is a bad move. This don't look right. So yeah, I was gonna say a lot of a lot of millennials aren't buying homes since simply because of we already have a home. Yeah. And it's called student it's, it's called student, student loan debt. <laughs> student loan debt. <laughs> that's what that's what most millennials mortgages it's their student loans but go ahead i'm sorry yeah no no you're good bro trust me we have a conversation i love it but, um so what happened was every, so this whole like people buying houses and whatnot and everyone around me especially black people they are here trying to buy a house and so everybody needs to get their credit fixed to buy a house yeah. so um i forget the name of it but the go the main goal this is how you know what network marketing is the main goal isn't to help people fix their credit the main goal is to get more people helping people fix their credit i'm like oh i get what this is mm -hmm. and i remember back when i was like early 20s um late teens i remember these ne um, network they used to call pyramid schemes ponzi's and i'm like bruh i know what this is but the thing was it was a very very beautiful black woman that was leading it and she knew exactly how to use her sex appeal to not only get my friends in it but then get my friends to like bro you gotta do it man we even if it is man them dudes get rich and we getting in early effort we getting in early i'm like all right cool so what we were having like a little meetup you know because you have to have like weekly meetups and stuff and one of the dudes that was in it too grinding he was like hey y'all heard about this bitcoin thing nah bro this thing went up like a hundred percent yesterday hold up we gotta jump on this Cause you know, everybody in that mindset, your mindset of, we got to make this money. We got to make this money wherever we can. And so they're like, get into this. And I remember it was, um, I think it was like, I forget it was a Thursday night or a Wednesday night. And we at the girl's house, you know, planning and stuff, trying to do whatever we got to do. And like, plotting on your next victim. <laughs> How are we gonna get these dudes in? Like, how you, because and I mean, I'm like, we were like, because she got us in, but we're yeah. dudes. How are we gonna get other dudes in? Yeah. So we plot in, and the dude comes in the room, is like, nah, bro, this crypto thing is what it. You need to get a Coinbase account right now. You need to get a Coinbase account and then get a Binance account right now. And we were going in. We got I got a Coinbase account, and I set it all up. And mind you, this is 2017. And then I had got a Binance account. And then the very next day, all the exchange shut down. All the exchange stopped accepting people. And I was just like, ooh, I got into the sweet spot. I made it. Wow, I feel bad for them losers. They can't even get in. They can't even enjoy what I'm doing right now. And so, of course, you know, you, know you were at the top of the... 
of the roller coaster. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and to your point, you didn't really hit that. <laughs> but the thing is, the dude got us into altcoins like immediately. Okay. They're like, don't even worry about Bitcoin, man. That thing's mm. old. Go straight into altcoins. Mm. And of course, that was alt season. Mm. And anything I put my money into, pop. I'm like, whoa. I just put $100 in this. It's $1,000 today. Nah, nah. Take my savings. Put it in the, what do you mean? And so I was popping it in, popping it in. And everything was popping off for a month. That whole month of January, yeah. pop off. And then not only that, but um, I was working with PricewaterhouseCoopers at the time, and I was on my um, Christmas vacation. So I had like three weeks of vacation locked up, and all I did was, all right, I know I'm putting my money in this thing, but what is it really? And I went down the rabbit hole, and I never got out since. <laughs> I was wondering, like, what, what was the thing that caught you? It wasn't, it was it, was it the allure of riches and wealth? Or was it something else? You said you went down the rabbit hole. Tell us kind of what really got you and captured you. Because if it was just for the money, you wouldn't be here today. No, nah, so I wouldn't. Explain to me and the audience why, what was so intriguing about cryptocurrencies and what made it different. So this is going to go back into my background in the sense of yeah. I went to I went to college for accounting. I got a degree in accounting. And then right after um, um, getting that, I went to work for PwC. PricewaterhouseCoopers yeah. is one of the top four accounting firms in the world. Um, after that, um, when I went down the rabbit hole, I, I was like, so what is Bitcoin really? Is it like who controls it? Oh, no, it's a decentralized ledger. And the moment I heard ledger, I'm like, huh? What do you mean ledger? I know all these. I know CRM product. I know this, this, and that. I know every company has their own ledger, da, 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 da. But what do you mean it's a decentralized ledger? It's a ledger that everyone can audit. I'm like, wait, what? And then it, I went down the rabbit hole of like, wait, so what makes this work? I can audit this ledger right now? So I blockchain.com. Oh my God. I can literally see everything moving. I can go back to the very first Bitcoin transaction 10 years ago. Right. I can see it all. This is going to completely wreck the accounting industry. Mm. When everyone's on one ledger and there's nothing you can do about it, everyone can verify everything. Everyone can do this. I'm like, oh, this is going to change the world of accounting forever. Mm. They're You're like looking at it from an, an industry standpoint. Yeah. Uh, from an accounting industry standpoint, a disruption in the in that industry. And I was just like, oh my God. And then I started reading articles about how PwC slowly sliding in, but they ain't telling nobody, nobody at the office about it. Um, um, what was it? Um, uh, uh, Andreessen Horowitz was sliding in, all these other dudes sliding in, but they're not telling nothing. They're not, they just like, you know, they're doing their due diligence. They're trying to figure out what projects is good too. But they're not well, telling Andreessen anybody. Andreessen Horowitz it. has been in the game for Who? shoot. Andreessen Horowitz has been in since like 2013, 13, I believe. Like I got in before even Coinbase existed, and Andreessen Horowitz mm. was uh one of the first VCs to invest in Coinbase. Yep. And so I was looking through, and then that's when I got stuck. Now, granted, at the same time, thing it's it's January 2018. Altcoins are popping off. I, I'm looking into ICOs. I'm like, oh, so this, so you put, so this is a smart contract and somebody needs to be able to audit the smart contract to make sure that it's doing what it's supposed to do. And you send them this and it's almost like a V lookup function. And I'm like, oh, this is nothing but a, cause if you think about what a smart contract is, you send your, you send them your Ethereum to this smart contract. And the smart contract then gives you this XXX coin that has no value whatsoever. And then w eventually this um, exchange is going to list this coin and it's going to be at a way higher price than what you paid for it. That wasn't, that's what I understood about an ICO at the time. And I'm like, bro, a smart contract is nothing but a, if this now then function, if you send this now, I send that fully automized where no one can mess with it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, this is going to change everything. Yeah. This, Because I, I understood accounting and I understood like Excel. And right. so when it came to like functions, I'm like, this is, this is a very simple function. Granted, I know there's like a lot of stuff behind it, 
But once I once that happened, bro, it was it was a wrap for me. I I couldn't I, I couldn't let it go because I realized um, cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, it brings all types of people. And when I started learning about all the different types of people in this space, I'm like, wow, I'm just I'm just a certain wave. I'm just part of the the this. I'm just part of this wave. There's another wave coming, and another industry of people are gonna get disrupted and see, whoa, what is this? And I, I, I it was um, so that's really how I got started. Okay. And maybe we, we could talk about that and then I can talk about how like I got started with the channel and what caused me to like do the channel and completely jump into it. Yeah, because you you eventually uh, actually quit your job. Is yeah. that right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So I quit wow. my I, I quit my job because I was already in the process of quitting my job. Um, was I, that? I was going um they, they were overworking me like they were overworking me to the point. I, I just couldn't like I wasn't living anymore. Like I was in the like you if you understand the life of an accountant and an, and like a, a tax auditor, uh -huh. um, there is no life, there is no work life balance at all. There is you're always in the office. Granted, the money's coming in, but you're you, you there's there's no life after that. You it's office, go home, sleep. You barely have time for your girl. I'm like, this isn't what I signed up for. I mean, well, granted, I, I, I see, I see the accounting industry being one of the first ones to really get hit hard from AI. Anyway, yeah, so it's good that you moved out now because it's going to be so, such a disrupted industry in the next five years, bro. It, you know, you're going to need half the workforce, the human capital that you have right now when it comes to uh, accounting, banking all that stuff and then um just seeing into the facts like if you really want to make real money in accounting you need a C you need a cpa license and if you need that if you want that cpa license you have to go back to school get a master's degree take the cpa test and then get your license and that's where the real money over 100k is made and i'm sitting here looking i'm like wait a but second even those jobs are going to be eliminated this, bro I'm because because those are management jobs now yeah. cpa jobs are like just like you know interpretate regulation interpretate right. what's going on but even i was looking at my the people that were cpas and they're sitting there right there with me all day every day making sure i do my work yeah i'm gonna look at the overall work but i'm gonna need you to do it all though but i'm gonna overall look at it but they're right there with me too Yep. And and I was like, this isn't the trade off. This isn't living. This isn't what I wanted. I still like because and so. Well, and what only people have to understand, uh, crypto Kenzie, is that when you work for someone, inherently in a capitalistic society and uh, in, in scenario, you're being paid less than your actual output value to the market is. That's exactly. that. It has to be that. That's the way the function has to work. Even you take an athlete, even though an athlete is paid millions of dollars, millions, th their output is is normally billions of dollars collectively. So they're still being cheated, mm. uh, though. I mean, many of us probably wouldn't mind being cheated <laughs> at, that level, at that right? rate. At that yeah. rate, boy, yeah. Massa, Massa, please don't. <laughs> boy, you feel me? You feel yeah. that? But, you know, it's about what you what your soul is worth. And yeah, yeah, my soul yeah. wasn't worth what they were paying me because when I was like, bro, I know dudes that are like like cybersecurity like analysts making more than me, and I'm like, oh yeah, I was like, wait, what? People, dudes, like, bro, when I was seeing dudes on YouTube just making videos for the past five years, making a hundred k plus, just making dumb videos, I'm like, what was I doing this whole time in college? Like, wait, what? Somebody lied to me. Somebody yeah, lied. How do, you, how do you feel about college? Because I, oh, I, I don't, oh. um, I don't, I, I think college for the most part is one of the biggest scams, uh, that we have in our in the millennial generation, uh, and 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 really, it's, I think it's, if you're gonna go to school for to be a doctor, sure, you gotta do that. If you're gonna go to school, there's still a lot of debt too. No, they are. I know. I'm just saying that you have to go to school to be a doctor. Yeah. You have to go to school to be a lawyer. But technology and the Internet and the access to information is so overwhelming for us as millennials and Zen, you know, all the generations below us that uh, school, I think, is 
should be looked at entirely different when it comes to that level, collegiate level and higher. It so, just isn't worth it anymore. So when with college, when it became a pro poor, um, for-profit business, it was a wrap. And that's what college is. It's a for-profit business. I'm talking endowments. I'm talking all these like um, Freddie Mac. I'm talking Sally Mae. I'm talking all these dudes. It's a for-profit business. I remember um, it wasn't about a month or two months ago in December. Who was having a whole vacation off the backs of student people of, of student loans? Um, I forget who was it. Sally Mae took all their people to Hawaii. Took all their top CEOs to Hawaii, living it up. It was Sally Mae. It was Sally, and I'm sitting here like, "Wow, this really." If you didn't pick a certain industry to learn to, in in college, even people who jumped into cybersecurity in college, I know dudes making way more than me still in debt though, still in debt, and I'm yeah, like, they're making yeah. It is uh, it is a great industry. But again, even IT, bro, I study this stuff, man. They call me, listen, I'm crypto man. When I, when I predict something, <laughs> it's it happening. Me, it, it, I'm telling you, bro. It's and, happening. And, and, ain't nothing even you can a, do. and even AI is going to disrupt uh, the IT industry. And so I see, I, I see it slowly happening already. Yeah. And know? so, and so as I see, as I started seeing like just the internet take over everything, but going back to the college thing, like I just, I, I personally, I see college as if you don't know what you're going to do and you don't have a goal and you don't have a thing, go to college, get a job and pay it out of pocket. Whatever you do, don't take out loans. Do as your, your hardest not to take out loans. College is going to be the most fun you will have in your life. But all that fun is not worth it when you're in your early 30s, can't buy a house because you have this loan on your back that you got to pay them every month with interest. But all that fun you had, you, you know, it, it's, it's part of the past now. And so honestly, the price you pay for college, the, the wages that they're paying out here for a lot of these positions it ain't worth it. It's it's not worth it. People getting in 60, 60 K worth of debt, but they go into the workforce and they starting off at 40. And I'm like, what? Like, like, does that even make sense? And so and wages have actually been stagnant for 30, uh, almost 30 years. Stagnant, bro. When, when you adjust for inflation, it's been stagnant for almost 30 years. So we have a, uh, we have a huge issue uh, from just a, a monetary standpoint yeah. uh the system is 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 dying and and it, and i think uh you know that's what intrigued me about crypto when yeah. i found out about it you know it's, i think this is a, a gateway to a new system um and, and and you know this this may be one of the solutions yeah and so i honestly do believe like so when i jumped down the rabbit hole of course i started i started seeing the money go down i started seeing all this and that and I didn't know who to who to believe anymore because there are so many people on YouTube talking about, oh, buy this coin, buy. I'm like, isn't this tiring, guys? Aren't y'all done with this? And so I initially found um, what's his Peter Saddington. I don't know if you know him, but I initially found Peter Saddington and his brother. And I listen, I don't watch any crypto channels. <laughs> I, but, no, seriously, I don't. I don't know any. I don't know anybody unless they're my friends. Like if they're okay. my friends on Twitter. I know them. I don't even watch their channel. You got to work. It's work. It's grind time. I, I completely understand this making content. I ain't realized until I realized it. Yeah. It takes a lot. Mm -hmm. You can't be out here. Just bump. It takes a lot. It's work, especially, it's work. If, especially if you're in our niche in the crypto niche. Oh, yeah. good Lord. You know, you it's don't get those views. Like, <laughs> like no, uh, you know, yeah. I know. You know, you don't get those. So if if you're not pumping out content, but so I initially, it's got to um, be a passion. Yeah, yeah, you have it's to really be a passion. If if it, if it doesn't wake you up and make you do it, it's it, you're not gonna make it. That's just I said. If you don't wake up and it doesn't feel like a job, you're not gonna make it. Right. And so I try to find a way to make this not feel like a job because I'm in it. I I see it. I see the future. I I have the foresight. I get it. This is this is this ain't going away. 
And if I know this ain't going away, then we then I'm I'm gonna ride it till the wheels fall off. You feel me? I'm gonna ride this. And so um going back to um, meeting them, um, he just seemed like a real cool dude. He was keeping it honest. He was just talking, telling us like, hey, nah, this ain't it, guys. This the ride is over. We just hanging out, like da 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 da. And so when um after watching his channel for a long time, and I got a couple of other channels that I've been watching, um, I was like, wow. These dudes is only at 10K. These dudes is only at 5,000K and people watching them. And I was like, bro, I got to get in this because I have my own perspective. I got right. I, I got my own, like, I got my own background in this stuff. Yeah, it, you have a unique, uh, you almost have a comedic <laughs> flair to your uh, videos, yes. which, uh, you know, is, 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 is definitely different. It's just different than um, many many uh, channels many, out here. Yeah, and so I was just like, I got my own style, my own flair, my own. No one's going to do it like me. And when I realized, when that popped into my head, like, no one's going to do it like me, I, I was like, you know what? I've never made a YouTube channel before. I never thought about this, but the way I see people streaming video games, the way I see people doing this, the way I see people doing that, and they're making a lifestyle out of it, I can make a lifestyle out of this. Because I believe in this, and I've seen what it... I've uh, it, it's, it's educated me more about money than I've ever been educated by college. Mm -hmm. This has taught me how to save my money. It, 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 I had to learn the hard way. I had to learn the super hard way of like, nah, this ain't it, bro. This price is going to go down. You need to take your money out. You need to learn how to save. You need to learn how to build. This is what real money is. We've had fiat money for X, X, X amount of years and how it's connected. And, you know, you know, the cold conspiracy theory stuff, which I love. I love the conspiracy theory stuff because more than likely that stuff is the real truth. But people call it conspiracy just because they don't want you to know it's the real truth. But after just learning about what real fiat money is and how the banking system actually works and just how um, how the Federal Reserve isn't really a federal part of the government. It's a private entity. It's a private entity that is owned and you can look up and see who owns it. And I'm like, and nobody cares. Nobody and it. No, no, one, cares. no one cares because it's it's not. It's not directly affecting them yet. It, it's not directly affecting them. It's passively affecting it's them. Passively affecting, and they don't get it, and they don't see it. And so people talk about, oh, make, let's make this passive income. You don't realize you're passively getting robbed every day. Yep. And you it's don't... called inflation. Every it's day. Called inflation. And so, so let's talk about that. So Bitcoin has forced you to become um, basically money woke. literate. Woke. Not even money literate because Bro. money lit literacy in money and finance does not teach you this. Yeah, if you, if I can go, say that. If you go listen to a Dave Ramsey, <laughs> you go listen to uh, what's the lady name I used to watch years ago? On, she used to be on CNBC. She's not on there anymore. She used to have an evening show. Mm. Um, I forgot her name, but she was, what she was really, talking. What she was talking about? Uh, just personal finance. Yeah. Debt. You know, people would call in and say, uh, "I have three hundred thousand in my bank account. I want to buy a, a thirty thousand dollar ring. Should I do it?" And she would tell you, "Yay or nay." But anyhow, yeah. um, that's still they. They don't even know. That's the crazy thing. But they have a they have an audience and they have a perspective of their own. Like, well, because when it comes to Dave Ramsey, which Dave Ramsey, I was shocked that I didn't learn about Dave Ramsey till like um, late 2017. I learned about Dave Ramsey, but and I was watching this dude. I'm like, and as I slowly start seeing him, he would always pop in a Bitcoin video here and there. I saw him like say few Bitcoin videos here and there, but every time he would talk about it, he'd be bashing it. Of and course. he re and he recently just did another video, like maybe like two weeks ago, he dropped a video because somebody was asking about it. And he was like, he was, it wasn't like he completely changed, but he talked different. He was like, oh, he sounds like he's actually learning something. He sounds like, and so, but going back to these whole financial literate, he's, he has a, a business model that works, helping people get out of debt. And he sells you a book to help you get out of debt. And the, and the knowledge that the, you get from the book is basic knowledge. Don't live above your means, save your money, pay off the least amount of debt 
And once you have that gone, don't use it again. Then go to the next thing. The simple things that people should learn. But the problem is, bro, that that's all good and, and fine and dandy. But because he doesn't understand or, or, or won't admit how this system works, it works on debt. So yeah. You teaching people how to get out of debt actually does them no benefit. Uh, if anything, you want to go in debt for the right reasons. Like a, a, a Robert Kiyosaki would say, you know, debt is good. If you if you if you manage right, it, if you utilize it in the right way, you know, instead of buying, you know, using debt to go buy some Gucci shoes, uh, you know, use debt to go buy assets and then that, that and, appreciate in, in value. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So the debt is important in this debt based system because it is it is it's a debt based system. So getting out of debt is really only is not it's not it's hurting you. Because you're paying for other people's debt in yeah. this debt-based system. Is this essentially that's how it works? Well, I will have to disagree with you on that one because if you're out of debt, then you then the possibilities are open for you to get into bigger debt and you and manage it better. You get what I'm saying? Well, that's what I'm saying. It's because it, it, you have to get back into debt. That's, there's no that's, choice. That's, there's no that's, choice. That's what I'm saying. That's exactly what I'm saying. You have to get. It, you getting out of debt to just go back into the debt. That's yeah. what you have to. If you if if you don't continue the debt based system, the whole thing collapses. Yeah, and and so I, me realizing that and noticing that how this just how this monetary system works, I'm like, there's got to be something better. And being in crypto, you learn about everybody's monetary system. You learn the French people, they 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 stuff is just as bad. Chinese people, yeah. they they stuff is they trash. And I'm like, wow. UK, UK just left Brexit uh, or did the yesterday, Brexit right? On yesterday. Yep. yep. Uh, they left the EU. That's going to be a year long uh, event, and you know, so yeah, it's, things are changing, and these are all symptoms of, of the problem. Of the of the system of, and yep. this of this of this of this financial system of this this IRS this Fed this all this that doesn't that all they do is just profit off the people off off all our all the little slaves yeah. we don't, we don't so, need these so faceless dudes. Tell me, what do you see for 2020? You've been in Bitcoin now for uh, over a little bit over a year now, right? Two years, hey, bro. So, two, years. two years. I put it on my chest. I'm in it in two years yeah. now, okay. bro. No, because you, you, I, I be like, look, there, like you said, you've been in it what since like before Andreessen Horowitz was in it, yeah, before it Coinbase. Seven, oh, seven years. It'd be seven, seven years in March, year. bro. You've been in it this seven years. In March, there are bro. only a few. There's only a small percentage of individuals that can say, "Oh, I've been in this longer than you." I can say I've been in this bit for two years. That's good. And now, like I've 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 slowly gotten people reaching out to me saying, and you know I'm getting the questions. What should I invest in? And I'm like, bro, I can't tell you that. I, I, but this isn't that what you're meant to channel. No, bro, it's meant for you to learn. It's meant for you to make your own choices. But I've got people on Twitter reaching out to me, and I'm like, oh, when'd you get in? And they're like, oh man, I just got in right at like eight thousand last year. And I'm like. Did you get in at like 3K? And I'm like, I've been in since 3K. They're like, man, you must be doing good. And I'm over here sitting like, yeah, what you mean? I've been in since 3K. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it, it made me feel good because I understand that this space is only going to grow and it grows with the price movements. That it's guaranteed. That's it. Oh, that's it. Yeah, don't, it don't, does. don't. Yep. That's it. I Superficial. <laughs> adoption this this that use it as money all the man shut that up if the price doesn't go if bitcoin's price doesn't go up nobody cares about any of this other stuff how do we change that how do we change the narrative of and and, and it, it is a, that that is exactly how i would uh, uh explain or describe this this industry industry right yeah if, um it, it's very it's speculative based heavily speculative right now Mm -hmm. um, how how do we change that narrative to where you have people wanting to get in because they they see a a need for a different type of a form of money a, a a more solid more sound form of money how how do we get people to understand that that is really the reason why you need to get in it not because you think Bitcoin is going to a million dollars there's there are a couple of things one first one time time will change everything. 
Just like how you've been seven years and you've seen everything, time will change everything. We, I'm starting to see politicians and we know politicians have their own agendas. Now I'm starting to see like Andrew Yang, which I still don't believe he's a real Bitcoin bull. Um, politicians have their agendas for Bitcoin now. I'm seeing what's happening. What is it? Is it Washington upstate? Um, their, their regulations is being super friendly and I'm like, oh, so this is going to grow like the marijuana industry and it's going to do it. But not only that, it's going to do it faster because the way this price pumps, um, the way these happening works, it's going to happen fast. And these dudes are going to have to make choices, but our system doesn't work fast. It doesn't, it's not how, it's not how it's built. And so I truly believe time is going to change it. Um, just to change the narrative itself, it's going to have to be people like you and me. Um, they're going to have to see people like you and me out here telling people the truth, telling people this is how it works, showing them like it's not about how the price movement. Yes, yes, you can make money if you know what you're doing. And if you don't know what you're doing, you will lose money easily. It's it's so easy. But not yeah, only that, you know, it's it's not a um, Bitcoin is not a, and, and you probably you may disagree or agree, but Bitcoin is actually not um, a good means of a currency. Nah, nah, not yet. Not volatile. even close. Not even, not even close. Right now, maybe in the future it, it, it could possibly be. But I look at I look at Bitcoin as a, an asset that yeah. potentially can be a great hedge for the next financial crisis. We've never had a financial crisis with bitcoin in existence and so this is going to be a very telling and interesting time this go round to see what happens with bitcoin when we have another 2008 and honestly my thing i i my and my belief is these rich people they're going to move if the, and i know they're already here people say institutional money is coming that's a lie they're already here that's why the price is being suppressed for so long. They're here. They, they're, they're gobbling up as cheap as they can. I truly believe that. But when you have, um, when you have, um, in, um, what is it? Companies like the CME controlling the price. Cause when you have, um, cause you know, everybody's getting their price feeds and the API price feeds from like CME group and futures exchanges. I'm like back a couple of years ago, this was based off of these regular unregulated exchanges. Now it's being based off of um, the CME and all this other, all these financial institutions that don't have good intentions for Bitcoin. That's where I see it's like, nah, this ain't this ain't it. But going back to the whole changing the narrative thing, that like I said, it's gonna be have to be like people like you and me, boots on the ground, and it's the hardest thing to do because you out here trying to educate, like not even educate, but just show them, guys, there is a better system. It's not perfect either. There's no way, there's no perfect system, but it's better than what you have now. And I guarantee it, the next couple of years, people are going to move to this system because it's, they realize I can, I can be in this system and have, and have a better life in this system than being in your system and struggling every day. And not knowing why. And That's, not knowing why. I think the first thing to educating um, people, period, not just millennials, but people, period, is to tell them what uh, what money is not, what fiat really is not, and then that gives them a compare and contrast to, okay, well, if 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 you know the U.S. dollar is losing X Y Z percentage uh, in purchasing power a year because of inflation. Like people don't even understand that concept so that's like that's my approach to helping people i don't even talk about crypto i talk about what's wrong with the current system so then they say well okay you told me the issue you told me the the problem what's the solution oh i'm glad you asked yeah. you, know, you know crypto bitcoin Come. sound money gold there, there, there are other alternatives to this so yeah that's that's great man what the elephant in the room i guess is okay uh blacks Okay. Our culture. Yeah, let's get you know, we, we, negros. We yeah, yeah. <laughs> we we're not uh we're not we're not we're not financial. We're not, no, we're not and we're not really in Bitcoin either. Nah. In crypto like that. See the sad thing is, and I'm gonna say this now, when when a majority of blacks get into Bitcoin, that's when I know I need to get out. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> but when I know I'm hot, this is what hot does. When I know if I'm too hot, all right, I need to put some aside into some like some stable coin, whatever. We honestly kind of saw that in 2017. I saw yeah. barbers talking about it. I yep. Thought, yep. You know, some, Shoot. Some hood, some real hood cats. <laughs> you know, like, I'm like, wait, hold up. Like, Something ain't right. Something ain't right here. What's going on? Because we know about Bitcoin. Ray Ray talking about. I need to. I'm a slide. I'm doing a Bart the, the Homer Simpson. I'm going into the, in the bushes. Like, I'm going back into the hold up, hold up. <laughs> My people understand it. Like, now nah, we don't have to move. But that's that's a narrative that we're gonna have to change because we all, all know right. black. We like get, we gotta get black people ahead of the ahead curve. Of the curve. We got to get you guys ahead of the curve. And granted, you know, like I said, you've been in it seven years and I've only been in this in two years. I still feel like, wow, there's still a lot more to go because people still aren't interested. People don't care. Price don't move. They don't care. And especially with our people, we're not we we don't get that education because we're we're not in it. If you have two parents, if you have a what is it, a nuclear family, mother and father, and they raise their kids throughout the years. And when they die, they actually leave something for their kids to pass on more than just debt. Because when I see when I see black parents and black people die, you know what I see right next to it when I see a post on Instagram or Twitter or whatever? Go fund me. Go fund me. We use GoFundMe the most, but we get the least money out of GoFundMe because we're always on Go because there's no plan for no future. Because we don't have that nuclear family. We don't have a father, a mother, or a man, a man, whatever it's going to be now because the world's changing. Oh, so man. people can make their choices now. That's a whole nother situation. That's a whole nother, and that's a whole nother conversation. Nother, <laughs> bro, that's a whole nother thing. But because we don't have that, because we have families being destroyed, black men going to jail, 13th Amendment, we've got, we've got for dumb things, and just you know, black men just being ain't shit and not. And sorry about the cursing. I'm try, I've been trying not to do oh, that. No, you're good. But just black men not trying to support their woman and their family, just doing whatever they want to do. Um, the children that get raised by that, they don't get raised in a family where you're educated about money. Think about this. Like, granted, some kids they they they're young and they get they get jobs to support their families. And so at a young age, they get educated with this. And so they need to pass that down to their kids, but a majority of them, they don't. And because we're not educating our children, the next generation is just gonna be a stupid, if not stupider. Yeah, I think uh, I agree with you 100%, 100%, but in addition to that, I think it's, uh, it's just inherently in our culture, in black yeah. culture that it, it's, a, it's a show me. It's yeah. a show me. We 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 have a show me type of um, mentality. We need so, to see it. We need to yeah, see that so you're if successful. I if I don't, yeah. If I'm not pulling up in a in a Bentley or a Lambo, or I'm not showing you, I, I'm I'm not on the money phone. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I could bring out the money phone. I could go get a you know a stack of hundreds and bring out the money phone. Money phone. I, have, I get a whole bunch of people to you know come. In. But that's the wrong approach. It's uh, to, to getting people into crypto because it's so much more than that, man. It's it's way more to more. And when I got in and when I realized, I'm like, whoa, there's a lot. There's a lot. And this bin moves fast. There's always something new. There's always something that's gonna top this dude. There's always a new Ethereum killer, Tron killer, EOS killer. There's always like, but nothing's proven nothing yet. People don't care. People like, don't care, right? That's why people, we haven't seen adoption. I would, I would say, I'm very shocked that we don't have the type of a. I, I would have thought by now, I'm gonna be honest with you. By mm -hmm. now, I would have thought we would have had more adoption than we do have now. And we don't crypto, and it is because people. The, I would, I guess, I would say the. Um, we have a PR problem. Like we, we haven't yeah. sold people on switching over because it really isn't there yet. To be honest with you. Yeah, it's not there yet for the average person to say, "Oh, I'm gonna leave Facebook for Voice.com or Upvote or whatever." What, what's the Uptrend? Uptrend. Oh, yeah, I'll be. I'm, I'm, I, you just is that really I, you on Uptrend? I just got on. There. Okay, cool. Just making sure that's really you because yeah, he would be impersonating. <laughs> but no, but you have to think about it. Like we have these decentralized platforms, 
and we're going down the rabbit hole because people are like, well, at least it's your channel, so people understand what we're talking about. Yeah, because people on my channel, if we're talking about this, huh? Click off, done, but no uptrend. Um, what else is there? Steam, but Steam's been around for Steam, you, you've been around for a while, yeah. and so like these platforms, the only people that care about them are people in, in this space and. There are only so many few of us in this space willing to use these platforms. Right. And it's right. it's it's just unfortunate that we like how can you it's like a chicken and an egg yeah. situation that we're in. You know, which comes first? Do how how do we get adoption without having adopt having adoption? Like people aren't gonna come over to these platforms if there aren't millions of people on the platforms. Exactly. That's just and how normal people are. That's just like if it's not especially black people, if it's not hot, yeah. Psh, what do you mean? Psh, hey man, that's 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 not cool. That was right. cool too. That was that's twenty seventeen cool. You still on that, bro? Nah, that ain't cool no more, bro. And so we we have this we have this hot mentality of jumping on what's hot. That's why we're always the hottest thing around. Yeah. Because yeah. we're always hopping on the like, and granted, we're the ones that make things hot, but Just don't kidding. benefit from it. But never benefit. <laughs> oh we my never, god! We never benefit from it monetarily. It's the and, saddest thing ever. And it's the saddest thing ever. And I don't, I don't get it. Why is it like this? And I'm like, it's systematically based like this, bro. And some, I hate to bring religion into this, but I remember a quote, I forget, it was on um, um, Kendrick Lamar's song, I forget which song, if it was fear or if it was God. Um, because we are God's children, we we're originally God's children, and we strayed away from whatever the real God is, we are going to be the ones to suffer the most. Amen to that. That's a whole other subject. <laughs> That's a whole other that We got to put that in the box. I had to come back <laughs> on for that one. Bro, bro. bro. I'm I'm right there with you. You know, uh, that's another issue I think we have as as black culture. We don't have an identity from a spirituality standpoint. We don't have history. It's been, you know, <laughs> it's been erased. Yeah, it's been cut off or misconstrued. Lied to. Yeah, and, and for those who are already over here, you know, that's a whole nother situation too. So tell me about like to kind of jump subjects though. Okay. Uh, crypto and youtube and this crypto purge i heard you had some uh some thoughts and conspiracy theories on it do you still feel that way or do you what's your thought on that first wave of bands crypto purge that we had uh about a month ago so that whole so there's see this is what i hate there's two things i hate in the crypto space one is people trying to say oh this 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 is the reason why price went up no Oh, because this person, uh, this this the the Chinese president said this price went up. No, this it's not really that. We'll never really. Oh, it was the token Ponzi scheme that caused the whole little mini bull run in, in last year. Like, and then there's always something new that's like, this is the reason why. And I guess that's just part of the industry. And so when the whole crypto purge came through, oh, it's Google banning us. They 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 getting ready for the purge. Oh, it's a select group of individuals who completely spammed certain accounts just so that they can get like knocked off. And honestly, now after the crypto purge, I truly believe it was a strategic attack by certain individuals to get their content down so that their content is the only thing that's up. Granted, the only thing that was up at that time was the little Litecoin summit scam videos. And I'm like, how are these little Litecoin summit scam videos, these these Binance summon scam videos still up? But Ethereum, everybody Yeah. The Ethereum scam crazy. And I'm like the, the, the hackers were uh they were hacking like bigger YouTube accounts. Yeah, because I wasn't erasing, affected at all. And erasing all no, I'm saying they were the, I'm talking about the live streams you're talking yeah. about. So they would hack a big gamer channel or whatever that had a hundred thousand subs erase all the videos change the logo mm. change the name and then put a stream up and say it's ethereum network and it's yep. clever man they, it's 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 they ingenious bro yeah it is i'm like this dude's is savage yeah and I, savage I personally it. just kind of looking at the whole purge thing i really think it was from the situation that uh crypto chico had with the, the indian guy which one um he had a he had a beef with an indian some indian guy was saying that he was racist and, oh you think it really you because i remember because i do i do um i ain't gonna lie i watch chico crypto religiously i really do 
But because he has he has a just he just has a different perspective. But I don't like the way he attack people. But we're not gonna talk about influencers like that. Is this your channel? Anyway, no, we can talk about whatever <laughs> we talking about. But no, like so when I saw that happen to him, and I'm like, in my head, I'm thinking to myself, one, Chico, you, I love, I'm, I, I moderate on his channel from time to time. Like I always be moderating. He, he, mod but you attack people in a certain way that if you keep doing it. You're gonna build your audience of people that like that shit. I'm sorry. So what does he do? What like, I've never seen one crypto chico video. He, he well, his style is that he 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 brings informative. Like he taught me about the 21 Club. He he taught me about um what was it the Satoshi Roundtable. He goes he dives deep into like things that like I guess a newbie who's only been there two years wouldn't even know. Okay. He, he like he really does do that research. He has one of the best researchers in the space, but at the same time, he attacks people that he does not like because he doesn't like the way they they portray themselves in this crypto space. Granted, when you're in the crypto space, you can be whatever you want. You can be a scammer. You can be this. You can be that. And what he doesn't like, he kind of plays like policeman. And sometimes I be feeling like, bro, he must be the feds. <laughs> He must be the fans, bro, because the way he plays, where he, like, where is he out of? Well, I, he's out of Cali. He's okay. he's out, yeah, he's out of Cali. Um, he was in he was in Florida for a while. He was in Miami for a while, and then he went back to Cali. Um, going back to Cali. Sorry, I, I, I'm, I'm corny as fuck. My fault, bro. But um, just going back to the whole situation of like what happens. He he essentially like anybody who's promoting Bybit, he goes after them. He goes at because he's like, this is just the second coming of BitConnect. We have old BitConnect people promoting by bit. And so if he if you're a by bit dude, he he'll come at you heavy. Really? And yeah, he'll he'll bro, if he Isn't if you know, buy bit a uh, a crypto he, exchange. Yeah, it's a leverage, it's a leverage it's trading like exchange. BitMEX, right? It's like it's literally like BitMEX. What's the problem with that then? Because well, is you have to. Affiliate program it's, the affiliate, it's, it's the affiliate program. It's, it's the affiliate. It's the affiliate. It's the affiliate. Because he understands that, like the affiliate program, he knows there ain't nobody making money in this unless right. you do an affiliate program. Well, yeah. But that's affiliate. Pro that's affiliate marketing. Like, let's just be real. Like regular YouTubers do affiliate marketing, right. but just the fact that he he understood he be like coming at them like, yo, you don't be telling your people that like your audience. And sometimes I'd be thinking that he hating on them, but it's, it, it is what it is. But he, he, he like, you don't tell your audience how much you're making off this affiliate marketing in the background. You don't like you out here getting burnt off. Like you, you, you you're not actually teaching people how to leverage trade. You just be like, Oh, look this, go sign up. but go sign up. You might want a long short here. I don't know. But I, I know these dude. like in my head, if you making a lot of content every day, ain't no way you're trading for real. Ain't no way, cause content takes up so much time. It's a full time job, and if you have a full time job and you making full time content, and you telling me that you trading too, nah, I don't believe that. But Man, these at niggas the, ain't no trade. I mean, I've been trading for thirteen years. Bro, bro. these dudes ain't trade. You got the whole algo system. You, like, yeah. aren't you? You you built that from I scratch. Algos. Yeah. yeah, you built that from scratch, bro. So I'd be like, oh yeah. So it's automation. He does his automated. Cause he ain't he ain't trying to deal with the the swings. It don't matter what the swing. It's gonna do what it's gonna do. Yeah. I might as well have something automated to be be riding it. You yep. feel me? And manage the positions in and out of it. Yeah, scale in and out of them. But and so when I see uh, that's interesting. Yeah. So and then not only that, but he then he he attacks people like he be attacking like some dudes, and I, I just be like, I don't support that side of him okay. unless it's like real. But right. then, but then when he attacked, yeah, he, like, he, he evidently attacked the wrong, the wrong people, and uh, the they wrong came and, and they had the ability to, to ban him, bomb and hit and, him, uh, and, and a lot and of people got street. hit. Yeah, a lot of people got hit. And so I do, I do think, and this all started from that conversation. But I do think it was a coordinated attack. But it just goes to show you how easy it is. It's just yes. that's, that's how easy it is to just get rid of all of us. Gone. Right. right. Just like that. If we if Google doesn't support what we talking about, if if decentralized exchanges become illegal, which I truly believe will happen, um, 
and I, that's just per- personally to me. I just know that decentralized exchanges, even though they're not even up and up and ready to be really worked like that, they, but of when they, re- they will be, yeah. But, but when and they get that point, know, they're gonna be. They're that, gonna be. That's ridiculous. the thing I warn people about all the time, Kenzie. Is uh, we haven't seen a coordinated attack by governments on crypto yet. Not a real. I mean, I, a, I would. No, not a real. I'm talking about a real one. We have not seen a real. We, we've seen we seen some slide jabs now. I was like, I will believe back is definitely a slide jab. The, that the 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 futures was a slide jab because now that you have the like you always That's had the an ability attack on the price. I'm talking yep. about an attack on adoption. It, oh, we now that not seen an attack mm-hmm. on cryptos yet. I'm and that's going to be banning. scary. Well, that's what I'm saying. So there is still some tail risk or headwinds we may have to endure in this game. And if you really bought this life and you yeah. about crypto, ready you for this understand. war. Yeah, exactly. We we getting ready for battle. That's it's really what it is because if earlier in the conversation I compared this to the marijuana industry and how they have to grow cuz that is literally how we're growing right now, state by state. Each state has their own like sets of rules and whatnot. Look at what they had to go through. They had to go through so much regulation just to get pot stocks on the thing, just to do this, just to do that. And slowly but surely, now states are finally like, you know what? It's legal. Let it go. We haven't even got through the battle stages yet. We're just trying to collect warriors. That's all we're doing. We're just trying to collect warriors for this fight. But the thing is, we we the 300, and we about to go against an army. These dudes have infinite money because they print it. How are you going to fight something with infinite money? And it's like we gonna have to see, and I'm and like personally, I'm re- I'm here for the fight. Like that's the, that's that's the stuff that I feel like when I get a real audience. Like I love my audience right now, but when I get a an audience that's that's educated to the point where I'm at, and I'm talking about let's get ready for this fight because this fight is it's it's slowly creeping. Because God forbid Bitcoin breaks twenty k, then you know the fight really coming. That's what I, I truly believe. When the, when we break twenty k, shift may jump off a bridge. <laughs> Poor Peter, Bruh, Because like I'm sorry, I don't I don't like giving that clown intention, bruh. But it's his 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 model is genius though. He plays the devil's advocate. He gets he, so much attention from so the crypt- much attention the crypto from the community. It's just disgusting. It's, a, it's disgusting. And I've, been, I've been following uh, Peter Schiff for about six years, so I know mm. Peter Schiff well. He's a smart guy. Um, he knows what he's doing. Smart guy, but got Bitcoin totally wrong. I honestly uh, think. I honestly think he, uh, bro. Real talk. He's another dude talk bashing it, knowing he has stacks. I truly believe this. He has to, bro. He has I to have. I don't think he does. I you think, really don't. No. But didn't he, he just come out and say he couldn't get into his wallet? Well, he got that was donated funds. Those are all the donated coins he had. What? Well, why are we donating coins? That's what? why Look. I don't understand that either. <laughs> oh my god! And either. like, bro, we don't need. We don't need to. Like, Jesus didn't go out and 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 reach out to the people who didn't believe. He just had people that believed in him, and then people saw that. Oh, you believe in him? Hey, we boom, we gonna believe in him too. He didn't force other people to believe in him. You just had to believe. So why are we trying to force people that don't believe? Why are we giving coins to a person that man? Give me them coins, cause I believe. <laughs> well, I believe. <laughs> give me them coins. That. You feel that. me? And I so, and so, give like if we don't let him go. Let, if we stop paying attention to him, he, he'll shut up. We don't like. But the thing is, he's part of the industry now. And that's what I'll be talking about. You can be anybody you want to be in this industry. Mm-hmm. Anyone. You could be a scammer. You could be a Bitcoin ain't nothing person. You could be whatever. No, like nobody cares. But you can build an audience off the people that do. And so I, that's why I'm like, nah, I, I need I need to get in. I need to get out. I was like, nah, bro. I, y'all need to hear me. Y'all need to hear how I speak. Y'all need to see what I say. Y'all need to see how I'm going to spread adoption, how I'm yeah. going to do it. Yeah, we need more, uh, you know, especially for the culture. We oh, of course. More uh, of us in this game trying to get our people in it, you know, because we are. Unfortunately, as we, st- as we stated before, um, the black culture is normally last of the party. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, it's, you know, 
It'd be like that, but I will say these Africans, but these Africans got these coins, bro. No, Africans are different. They're, bro, they're, yeah, they're they're, 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 bro, they're different. They're different, I know we bro. Look, bro. I know we look different <laughs> chocolate face like them, but they're a different genuine, genuine chocolate flavor. They're a different good. culture because these, together. I'm talking about African American or an American. You want to label the black people over mm. here, <laughs> bro? The black people over here. The black yeah. people over here. They don't. They don't. They don't get it. No. Don't pay attention to it because it's not on their mind. Go to a, go to a black person. You know what they talk? Well, right now they're talking about Kobe, and as you know, RIP. But yeah, right. they're just talking about they're just talking about what's popular right now. What's going on on the housewives right now? Who, who's beefing with who right now? The offset. Who did he punch at the club right now? Like that's that's it. Mm-hmm. They're not talking about how to better themselves out. Now, there's a few. Now, when I go in on like crypto Twitter and I be seeing like the dudes that are like devs, the black dev community, the black, because like, I be seeing them, I'm like, oh, okay. The, and people like the, the real estate, trailer real estate. And I realize that crypto's introducing me to people that are about their money, that are about their business, that are just like me. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Just like me, but they're about their business too. And they're not caught up in all that, whatever's going on. But if you want to reach your people, if I want to reach the black community, I have to be, t- I have to be in tune with what's going on. Yeah, absolutely. And absolutely. so, and so it's, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a ridiculous trade-off. Um, and I really wish it was different. I, I really do wish it was different. I really do wish that we could get more of our people on the train because I truly believe in 10 years, 10 years granted i know you had your belief seven years ago thinking man seven years from now boy it's gonna be a whole different game 10 years from now it's gonna be a whole different game oh like, yeah definitely is. if it's if it's the same if it's more than the same then it's a shame because this thing failed then yeah if, for if, sure 20 if, years if, later 17 years later 14 years later if it's if, same we're in the same situation yeah it it's failed. failed it, it failed. failed and well, and the, and we're just in a niche community. And granted, I, we vibing, bro. I, I, I like, I, lo- I like it, bro. People like, granted, there's a lot of hate out there, and people just feed. But that's just Twitter in general. That's just the internet in general. The internet brings out the worst in people. It does, you, man. Bro, that's I what it to, does. I, you know, and that's another thing I had to learn that uh, starting this channel. Uh, it's going mm-hmm. on year three for me with the actual channel. Yep. Man, I had to I had to scale back on a lot of my thoughts and uh, feelings about people because that made statements because I was ready to get busy. Mm-hmm. I'm but, like, wait, this is the internet. This is it's the internet. People would never say this stuff in person. And they won't ever say it to your face. Nah, look, up, man. look about the people that be talking crazy on the internet. See me at a conference. I. Hey, how you doing? Yeah. What's going on? You wouldn't know, but not only that, but like when the moment you were able to to make it a persona and nobody knows who you are, you can talk reckless. Yes. It brings out the worst in people because you can say whatever you want and there's no repercussions to you. Right. But you can completely mentally destroy somebody on the internet. Mhm. If yeah. that person allows it to happen, yeah, if they're not strong enough, mentally. if you're not mentally yeah. strong enough to deal with it and bro, I, and I know like I haven't gotten the worst comments yet, but I know when them real comments, like I've, I've seen some comments on some videos. I'm like, Whoa, it's not that serious, bro. Mm-hmm. It's not that mm-hmm. serious, but I'm like, you got to prepare yourself for that. But that's yeah, just, you do. it's just the internet, bro. Yeah, you're right. It's just the internet. Crypto bro. Kinsey, where can they find you, bro? Man you, man, you know where you can find me, man. Go to man, check me out on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, at Crypto and Culture. Um, my handles at Crypto Kinsey on Instagram, on Twitter. I just be on there. I just be letting you guys know what I'm into, what I'm looking at, what interests me, and we just be we vibe. And I be going to conferences. I be looking at the purge. Um, and I got a lot more content. This 2020, bro. I'm bringing in a lot more content. I'm getting a whole new setup. Because right now I'm moving out of my setup, so I'm taking time with my content. But when I get my whole new setup, and I just love the creation space. And so if you want to vibe, if you want to enjoy, if you want to see funny skits on crypto, because I be doing making funny skits with my friends, and just try to educate people. If you're down for that, man, come through, come to the channel, and come hang out with me. You might actually like it. 
you know what I'm and if you're a little bit newer to the space, come through. Because like I said, I've only been in there been two years. I'm not going to hide it. I'm not going to pretend. At least you know where I'm coming from. At least you know that I'm, I'm not going to be like, yeah, man, you know about my first Bitcoin in 2011. But I really didn't know. I didn't really a think whole about bunch of people that do that. <laughs> I'd be like, bro, and I, and I don't say anything, man. You 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 got the stories. You and you hear people, and they're not saying certain things. I'm like, oh, all right. You say you've been here for X amount. You you got in yesterday. <laughs> Look, all I can say is I, I've seen some exit scams, bro. And as long as I've seen some exit scams, and I'm I'm in it, bro. Yeah, like I said, guys, uh, I, I like Crypto Kenzie. He's honest. He's not a shiller. He doesn't like shill projects. He's just a, a genuine, um, cr nice crypto uh, influencer that's doing his thing, reported on the news and everything out here. So check him out on YouTube. Check him out on Twitter and Instagram. It's your boy Crypto Blood. That's another kick in his session with Crypto Kenzie. We out of here, people. Holla. <laughs>